everybody's always talking about the modern game of tennis, especially on the forehand. And uh, yeah, while a lot of things really have evolved, have changed, and some old things we do need to throw out, there are still some things that were good back then and they're still good now. In this video today, I'm gonna go over the closed stance forehand. Yes, if you watch tennis on TV, there is predominantly the open stance or semi-open stance, but the good old closed stance still has its time and place, even in modern tennis. So the closed stance is probably the one that you were taught in the very beginning when you started. And what it is for me as a right-hander, my left side is pointed to the net. So my left leg, my left shoulder, left hip, all point towards the net and my chest faces to you, to the side fence. And in the beginning, that stance is absolutely fine because when you are newer, let's face it, we do feed the ball more through the middle. And also when you are in the beginning of your tennis career, you are playing most points through the inner third of the court. So a close stance is a really good stance for that. And of course, then once you progress in your tennis journey, you do have to learn the open stance and the semi-open stance. And those I will teach you in some of the next videos. You use your close stance when you have your body weight coming from behind the ball. So most likely it will be a slightly shorter ball in the center of the court. So what you don't wanna do is force yourself to hit a close stance when you're being on the run. That's when the open stance comes in and we're gonna deal with that in the next video. But close stance is when you can move up to the ball and you still see that all the time. So one of the reasons why the close stance still applies and why it is a little easier to learn to my mind than other stances is that it is a lot easier to plant and load on your outside leg, your back leg, and then simply step forward and transfer your body weight from your back leg to your forward leg in a more linear fashion. One very useful pattern on the close stance is the double step. And that basically is when you're not just taking one humongous step, if you're mistimed here, you're gonna reach, you're gonna do all kinds of funky things. So it is really helpful to use this double step. It's a lot easier to my mind to gauge the distance properly and to really get the energy from your back leg into your front leg. One of the issues with a cookie cutter approach to just hitting every single ball with an open stance is when the ball actually drops a little lower than you expected. Because if you misjudge the distance and you're already set up in an open stance, you either have to reach or you kind of come forward with sort of penguin steps. And that's not gonna give you the best quality of a shot you can produce there. I think there are some misunderstandings about the closed stance and that makes it so easy for coaches to then say, oh, they're old school and no, you shouldn't be using it. One of those misunderstandings is that when you set up with the closed stance, you should stay sideways. And that does feel really awkward. That's absolutely not what we wanna do. So just because you set up with the closed stance does not mean that you have to force, for me, my right side to keep that back. Because what you're doing then is you really block the flow of energy in your kinetic chain. So what you see now all the time is that yes, you do set up with a closed stance, but then the player lets the right hip come around. And that comes from the energy that you get from the loading, stepping forward, and you're just letting that energy flow its natural way. So do not force yourself to stay sideways. That's more the Chrissy Everett way. One of the other misconceptions is that if you want to hit a closed stance ball, you have to get there already turned sideways, which leads you into shuffling, which means you're not getting to a shorter ball. So what you want to do instead is this. Move up to it by, yes, sprinting. Get there the fastest you can, and then you turn. And you're actually gonna use something that's called the hop step, or a left, left hop, or a double hop. Either one works. Here's how you execute the hop, hop step. So you do see that I'm running to the ball because if I were to just shuffle, I'm not gonna get to the ball. So now I'm turning, I'm sideways, and you see that the left foot here is in front, 
And instead of taking the right foot through and basically opening up, I am staying somewhat sideways. Of course, my right hip and right shoulder are coming around, but not excessively so. And I do that by just hopping forward on my left. And then I can let my right foot come through to continue to transition up to net. So especially when you're being pulled in and you have your entire body weight, your entire momentum behind the ball, to then go and wanting to set up on a short ball with an open stance, that feels really awkward and you're basically having to put on the brakes to do that. So the hop hop step makes it a lot easier to transition further through the ball. If you like this video and you want more and exclusive content, content that I'm not publishing anywhere else, consider joining my Patreon membership site. For as little as $5, you get early access, many more videos, perks, discounts on workshops, camps, everything. And if you're upgrading to Grand Slam level, you're joining our monthly coaching call. So consider my Patreon membership site.